thank you for inviting me for this conference. So uh, I just start the presentation immediately. Uh, the title is uh, Play with the Fire, State Security and Serigraphy uh, at the Mako Art uh, Colony. Uh, this will be a case study, not an overview of this theme, what I provide you now. So uh, correct. A characteristic feature of post-war Hungary was the political role of art. Many artists have assumed a role in public life and tried to actively participate in the shaping of the country's fate. Accordingly, the state also considered the high priority of the arts and tried to influence the developments of the art world. The cultural bureaucracy constantly dealt with issues of art. They registered and condemned artworks which were interpreted and as inappropriate and harmful to the ideology and the expectation of the Hungarian Communist Party. This is supported by the number of documents of the historical archive of state security related to the participant in the art world. The state security operated a great amount of agents in the art scene. The agent were present at exhibition openings, house parties, and uh, uh, cafes. The methods of observation and intimidating uh, included warnings, interrogations. So uh, there were several reasons to have someone under surveillance. Either the target person was involved in anti-regime activities, or he, uh, she was approached for recruitment purposes to give information about a specific acquaintance. For us, these documents are very interesting and important, since these could mean a further contributions to a deeper understanding, not the re-evaluation, however, of the art of the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. Information from security services, on the other hand, raise ethical and aesthetical questions. In recent decades, many artists and cultural professionals, as Giorgio Agamben, Okui Envezor, examined and redefined the role of archive by connecting it to the fields of perception, cultural memory, knowledge, loss, or discontinuity. In my opinion, such complex interpretations of the archive are relevant to use the state security reports. The use of these reports is methodical, methodologically is also questionable. The Hungarian historian Janos M. Reiner or the art historian uh, Josef Havasréti draw attention to the need to handle these documents carefully. First of all, people under surveillance uh, appear in the reports through narrow points of view in a world built by preconceptions. We cannot know whether a report is accurate unless we have, for example, a word-by-word -word transcript of a telephone uh, conversation. Uh, furthermore, the personality and the abilities of the agent could have led to distortions, e either adding extra details or keeping something back from what actually happened. In Hungary, a number of publications have already revealed the documents concerning the members of the literary or the rock scene. However, the processing of the files of artists has not happened yet. During my research on the history of the Mako graphic artist colony, I started to process the files on the artists working there. Therefore, I will focus them in this paper beside some other examples. Through examples, I will illustrate how the state security police intervened in the artist's private life and professional career. As we will see, it was the photographic reproduction that served as a connection between artists and the state security files. I would like to present the spread of the use of photography in the fine art practice and its importance in the graphic art of Hungary also its international political context, which made the surveillance of the artist necessary. 
the spread of photo-based reproduction techniques, such as screen and offset print, was preceded by the fine art use of photography. In the international art scene, since the late uh, 50s, the Fluxus art movement introduced art events happening to the fine art practice. These survived only thanks to documentary photos and films. With the help of the camera, the artist could uh, the artists with conceptual attitude were able to record actions, research structure, movement and temporality, or manipulate reality. Parallel with the changes that took place in the international art scene, the fine art use of photography spread in Hungary as well. On the slide we could see a performance by Tibor Hajas on the opening of the exhibition called uh, uh, Exposition which was the first one dealing with the issue of fine art use of photography. As a result of this change in attitude, conceptual, photo-based artworks appeared also in the Mako artist colony, in addition to the traditional narrative approach in the graphic art. The emergence of the new genres was supported by the local historical situation. In Hungary, in the second half of the 60s, the new left movements and the new economic uh, mechanism relaxed a strict framework of the cultural field as well. The state provided better living conditions and the availability of consumer goods in order to compensate the society for the lack of democratic values. On the other hand, on one hand, and uh, continued to control the import of the cultural products and limit international traveling on the other. However, the local art scene, despite the barely ease easing constraint, became more colorful. In the 60s, several artists, groups, and events appeared, like the Iparter group or the Sir Natalis group uh, and the Zuglo circle, that oriented towards the international scene, bearing contemporary art theories in mind, gradually broadening the boundaries of art in Hungary. So this is the group Iparterv. Um, uh, their opportunities were however limited by the fact that the directives of the Hungarian Socialist Workers' Party adopted favored socialist realism and rejected the individualistic interpretation of art as it was against the socialist doctrine. These guidelines became dominant in the party's cultural policy, summarized by Győgy Acél, the deputy minister of cultural affairs in 1970. 1957 with the categories of the so-called three T's, support, tolerated, banned. The three T's to the art scene meant that the costs of the supported works were funded by the cultural fund, while tolerated creators could work and exhibited only by uh, self-financing. The artworks that contained politically sensitive issues met a political opposition, they were thus displayed solely in private homes, minor community centers, or minor youth clubs in the suburb of Budapest. The situation was further complicated by the ongoing ideological, ideological struggle. The reasons were thoroughly summarized by the Ministry of the Interior Affairs in a 1972 publication entitled The Main Issues on the Hostile Activity Experienced in the Field of Culture. From this report, is it clear that the ministry assumed that the artistic standpoints appearing in the cultural field still had contained uh, revisionist beliefs? The documents of the state security historical archives roughly mapped the relations between the artist and the political opposition, including the writers Miklos Harasti, George Konrad, sociologist Agnes Heller, Otilia Scholt, Ivan Vitányi, and uh, the economist George Krasho. In general, it can be stated that the artists under surveillance because of their artistic activities were on friendly terms with the opposition and both sides used the samizdat as a means for artistic and political objectives in order to deliver their products uh, to wider audience. 
Some examples of the harassment of the artist. The poet and performer Tibor Hayash was under surveillance in the mid-60s because he was part of a youth gang that had members who earned their living by smuggling commercial goods. The investigation against Hayash was initiated after he made Nazi statements in the company of others and possessed Nazi insignias as well. The investigation materials revealed that the Jewish Hayash had done these only to earn his place in the gang. At the end of the investigation, he was sent to prison at the age of 90, where he spent 20 months. He remained to be under surveillance throughout the 70s because of his juvenile mistake, but also due to his artistic work and his relations with the avant-garde circles. Furthermore, the Ministry of Interior Affairs limited his travels abroad in order to repress his international career. The poet and artist Tamar Sentjobi was under surveillance uh, by several agents uh, due to his poems and because of uh, participating in the first Hungarian happening, the lunch in Memoriam Batukan in 1966. He was investigated and threatened to be prisoned into a madhouse to get mental treatments. In October 1974, Szent Jobi was arrested again after a copy of the Samizdat book written by György Konrad and Ivan Szelényi uh, entitled The Intellectuals on the Road to Class Power, uh, which was found in his apartment. In this book, Konrad and Szelényi tried to develop a new analytical framework for Soviet-type societies. Hayas Tibor was also interrogated during the night since he was close friend with Szent Jobi. Due to the graphic flyers made by Linokat and serigraphy, the uh, graphic artist Huba Balványos got under investigation also. A student fell under suspicion who knew Balványos, working at the time in, at the time in a community center, community center as a leader of a graphic workshop. In October 1972, someone handed out a large amount of serigraph pamphlets at the Ötvös Loránd University, at the University of Economies and Technology, on trains and in boarding houses. The state security agency immediately began to search for people who regularly engaged in reproduction, leading to the surveillance of the art historian László Beke, the actors uh, Peter Breznik and Anna Kós, the artist theoretician Miklós Erdély, and the sculptor György Jovanovic. The artist György Galántai and Julia Klanicai fell under surveillance for the first time in 1973 due to organizing exhibitions in an abandoned chapel close to the Lake Balaton. Uh, this location uh, was out of the focus of the censorship, allowing Galántai and the invited artist could uh, to execute exhibitions without being bothered, which was a rather outstanding monumentum in the art scene in Hungary. Galantai attracted the attention of the state security again in 1979 with the establishment of the Art Pool Archive, a collection of international and Hungarian fluxus art, mail art and other materials. Galantai also started to publish the journal Recent Letter, Art Put Letter, what we can see on the uh, slide. This contained articles about recent but highly prohibited art events and tendencies by Hungarian and international authors. Obviously, it was produced without legal permissions. The sum is that publications of the literal and the art scene were linked in several projects. The first initiative that has attracted the attention of the state security in January 1967 was the unpublished newspaper entitled Beginning. The founder was Szent Jobi. The team of authors would have included the poet Jenő Balaskó, the actor István Bálint, Tibor Hajas, the poet Ádám Tábor, the critic Sándor Radnóti, and Miklós Erdély. The next publication, without permission, was the exhibition catalog entitled Document 6970, uh, which presented the works of the second Iparterv exhibition. After the publication of the catalog, the editor, uh, the painter Dula Konkoy, had to uh, uh, emigrate uh, with his wife. The journal entitled Expression was launched in 1971. 
According to a 93 December secret report, several of the contribution, contributors were under surveillance uh, due to hostile activities. The writers Arpad Ajtony and Miklós Haraszti, the art historian László Beke, the artist Erdély and Hajas, the actors István Bálint, Péter Halász and Anna Kós, uh, the translator Béla Hopp, the painter and experimental filmmaker Dora Maurer and Sam Tjobi also. I think this brief summary could have shed light on how tight the network of the state security agent was around the non-conformist artist. The re-strengthening of the control forced several of the artists to leave Hungary, leading to a second wave of immigration of artists after the 60s. This, among other things, led to the rupture of the neo-avant-garde movement in Hungary. However, thanks to their activities, the new media, such as assemblage, happening, action art, as well as conceptual photography, spread in the local art practice. The printing film is essential for the photographic reproduction technique. Therefore, the producers of both the artistic and the political samizdat had to find illegal print relations or manufactured homemade machines, uh, something like what we see on the picture, uh, in connection uh, with such cases, the state, state security punished not only the intellectual creators, but the printer contributors as well. Multiplication had a different connotation behind the Iron Curtain than in the Western countries. What served as a device of artistic freedom in the latter became a tool for banned Samizdat publications in Central and Eastern Europe. Here it was difficult to access equipment capable of printing in large quantities. The authorities restricted printing options for reasons of cultural policy and state protection. Owing to the peculiar social political microclimate in the town of Maku, the artists working at the colony could legally exploit the possibilities provided by the new printing techniques in the print work of the town. As a result, offset and screen print became a part of graphic art, bringing about a major turn in the history of the Hungarian graphic art. It is a, a quite a, a contradiction, but so far during the research I have not found information on whether the Maku artist colony had been investigated by the state security. It is hard to decide uh, on the basis of the available historical documents if relevant materials had disappeared or indeed there was no surveillance, which uh, contradicts the fact that several of the artists at the colony have long been investigated earlier. The possible explanation could be the influence of the head of the town council, Dr. István Forgo, so fond of the colony that he covered up all disorder provoked by the artist's often scandalous behavior. While selecting materials for the exhibition of the Mako Artist Colony with my associate curator Arpad Tot, uh, we realized that apart from, the, uh, few, apart from a few exceptions, the works made at Mako were uh, rather apolitical. Our assumption is that there was an unspoken consensus that granted artistic freedom for the artist provided if they avoid political issues. So thank you for your attention.